what we do then, we, we, once we've selected it and we write that, we get a uh, little uh, context dialog and we say we want to create a new entity. And I get my little entity dialog box and I'm going to create an entity and one of the things I have to do is I have to assign a type to the entity. In, a, in the, uh, cons the context of an IOE database, basically we need to be an entity set. Entity sets correlate to an entity type. And then I can either, can, I can either retain the, just the text as the, name of the, as the name of the entity, or I can change it. It can still retain the same text, but I can have it either. And then I can create a color, and I can color the entity and the text with the bottom of it. So, and then here's my, my color dialogue and point color and the text. And so this is when I've got my entity settings all set up here, ready to go. And now I've got my, I've got my new entity, and I've got some color, and Remember, I did that through the entire set of did the entire document looking for that same name and it colored all that text and it related it, it created a relationship to all that text. So now we have an entity that knows where all of its constituents are in the document and it's represented on the notes in the database. Now that I'm, I go through, I'm just going to, just showing here where I'm going through that I selected from the one. Here I've created a day, and that was the same day, so I did it twice. I'm creating more, I had this name, this name. And so I'm going through and I've created all these names, and just going through even, even more. <laughs> so, and the next part is the important part, I think. And it's the thing that we need to, that I think makes anything, that you would pop, that makes this kind of powerful, is that now I can start writing and dropping these entities on top of each other. And once I do that, that begins to automatically create the relationships. So the database is now being constructed. While I just simply writing down these entities, um, I don't have a slide for it right here, but be able to right click here and create ad hoc entities that are not related to the text. Like if I wanted to create a, a um, coordinate, and then I wanted to write that coordinate onto a place, then I would have a coordinate and place associated with that. Then I would be able to write that coordinate onto a map. So I'd be actually one of my enemies over there would be a map. That map would be called shape, a layer of shape. Up. And then I would just drag my enemies, put it in this on. Now then, the metadata out of that was some sort of special. There's going to have to be some speciality in terms of if I have a coordinate entity, a coordinate entity type, it's going to have to be made, not, made aware how to draw itself into the map, how to, how to render itself as a part of a layer. That's something I'm still working on. I haven't gotten there yet. So, uh, this is, um, I can combine relationships. So basically, as I go along, I can get a relationship and I can drag it onto another relationship into another entity. So an entity can be, can be created from relationships and other entities. A relationship can be created from other relationships and entities. So it's, it's as free as you can make it without being out of the game. The idea is that a scholar doesn't necessarily know exactly what they want right away. The scholars are trying to figure it out as they go. 
They don't want to have to sit there and come up with an entire database scheme before they come up with what they're looking for, before they figure out what they're looking for. The idea is we want them to be able to go through their document one time, one time only, create a database as they go, and be able to have the flexibility to make changes and so on. Now, I said, how do you capture the visual just, just one minute. <laughs> All right, so in addition, yesterday uh, I went through and I took all of our place names that we had. So I went out and uh, Dan helped me with going out and uh, using the Google uh, web service. We put in all the names in the Google web service and produced it. The idea is that this would be the set of coordinates. This, this is the set of place names, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create the coordinates. <coughs> and so we're going to create a map of all the coordinates um, and place names for all the place names that are in that text file, which is in the number of <laughs> so, um, and then, I, I'm not exactly sure where to go and from the, I'm, I'm still working on the, the import of it all and the, and the mechanics of it all. I, I've got a lot of work to do to get to do what it's called and really want to do. So, this is where I'm at. So, um, now I can say questions. So what are you going to do is go, go back to the uh, open slide that shows you who you're filling in your preview with. Um, you mentioned that you have 13,000 record entries. Now, over here, it's fairly convenient to do drag and drop to build your relationships with them. only a few entities because everything's in that's in you. But what happens once you're at you know, a couple thousand entries? That's no longer really effective. Your, your drag and drop ability almost wants to be separated out to where you have. Um, one key one key thing about that is that it's true. It's very true. Um, one key thing about that is that there are not that many entities. There are that many lines. The reason why there are that many lines is because every time I create uh, a line from Shura Fourier, I have to create a line for another line from Shura Fourier that relates them to Shura Fourier. And I have another one that creates one to relate them to that one. That's it. That was the square root of 15,000. So the idea is that, and, and the idea that my names are gathered into a set of names, and so my, my events are gathered into sets of events. So the hope, and there may be management issues, but the hope is that, is that we will minimize the complexity to a great extent as we go along and the fact that they're doing this as they go and we can produce reports from this as we go and we can collapse this as we go. And that's another important thing. Plus, I don't show it here, but there's a cow and it's actually supposed to split out but there's uh, another whole tree that's going to do a relationship here. So we'll be able to basically find your different locations and drag them to a relationship. If I, were, if I were a data mining person, I would probably look at this from the standpoint the first step is how do you pick out those entities? And the first thing is place names you can probably get a good guess at from the dictionary by building a comprehensive place name set beforehand and then seeing the place name in this document shows up as a place name. Right, so a simple dictionary comparison for the data you can identify the structure, so you know what a name looks like, you know the kind of name of year or whatever that you're looking for. 
So that can be pulled out and at least classified it as a date. And then your names represent anything that is not in your standard dictionary. So if you have a spell check dictionary and it fails, you can tell it's a name. It's probably, it's probably a person. Probably name. Probably a person. So with those three strategies, you could probably do a little bit of at least now you, you that may not be enough to correctly put together the, the relationships, but right. but you could at least extract out these entities. Oh, I agree. I agree. There's, there's, there's a tremendous amount of that type of. As a matter of fact, the way I see it is that if you went through and just did this about ten of these different. Um, Selections at the very top, you would be creating a classifier. Mm -hmm. So in 10 minutes, you'd be creating a classifier, and after 10 minutes, you could say, run the classifier, and you, you could generate your entire tree almost entirely with an automated, automated system. The idea is you have to create some sort of a classifier from the back end. Well, thanks, Russ. This is a, so there was a question about identities. I think Ted sort of asked about the same thing about good relationships. Well, how do you see them, and then how is it that your foundation is using to now set data for money? And so by that, you can answer a future value, and then share later. Top down. I'll get that too, but it's a good question. And then, of course, the tie-in I'm excited about is to map and stuff. And, um, the one tool that that I uh, showed there is Google Geocoder. We use that in the program of these and map code for the name If you haven't tried it, it's actually very nice. We read in the text file uh, place names, and then say go and it creates a shape file. And by, uh, so it's kind of cool. Then we'll have to use it to integrate it to uh, one tool to uh, so that every time you have a place name, you can say, look up that geocode and geocode and then make a relationship between that place name and that geocode. So it's an you can use it to map. When you're doing your uh, network analysis, then anytime you have clusters of place names, you could represent them by larger dots on that. That sort of thing show that there is more. So we look forward to what I've done on the next year. Yes. Yeah.